Hello everyone and welcome back to this year's garden. This afternoon here now it's time to can up some beets. It's actually past time to can some of these but uh, you, know, you know regardless the garden just keeps growing so I'm, today I'm getting some picked and we're going to go through the process, get them in the pressure canner and can up some beets. So ideally when you're harvesting your beets, for canning anyway, this would be the ideal size. Between a one and a two inch beet it's supposed to be perfect. They're nice and dark red. As you'll see some of mine are definitely bigger but even when I can my beans and everything like that a lot of times they get bigger than they're supposed to be and it doesn't really matter to me. I just cut them up, get them in the jars, get them in the canner and they always taste good to me. So what you want to do, you want to pull these out, kind of rub the dirt off of them. You want to keep the tap root on there and you want to leave an inch or two of the top also, at least for right now. Now when you're harvesting these, you can eat the tops and everything on these. I'm not this time at all. I'm just going to throw it to the chickens. It's a little over 90 degrees today and I really don't feel like going through the process of canning these or anything like that, but you can and they're very good for you. Now I'm just washing the majority of the dirt off of it with the garden hose and then I'm going to bring it inside and we're going to scrub it again in the wash tub and then after that we're going to throw these into some boiling water. As I'm washing the beets in the wash tub over there I've got water here that's going to be coming up to a boil. And once I get them washed then I'll dunk them in here to get the skin on it loose and then we'll get them scum and trimmed up, sliced and put them into the jars. Even though I really don't think this is necessary when you're using a pressure canner, I still do put my jars in the oven for about 20 minutes just to kill any bacteria. It'll take you about 10 or 15 minutes to boil it so that skin will come off and then it comes off real easy. Just kind of got to peel it and it comes off in chunks. I always put them in cold water after I boil them otherwise you can't handle them. If you find any parts that you didn't boil long enough so the skin doesn't come off real easy uh, you could just take a knife like this it's almost easier than doing it with your hands to be honest with you but when you do boil them the right amount of time it comes off real easy with your hands also. I'm just about to peel the last four beets so I put another pan here of water to get this boiling. This is just clear water. This will go over the beets once they're in the jar. About the same time now I put the water in my canner and I always put, I don't know, two and a half inches, two to three inches of water in the bottom and I'll get this to start boiling right away now too. Alright, now that we've got these all boiled and peeled and all that stuff and I can't tell you how frustrating that is, I forget from year to year. When you're peeling them then the, the peeling comes off and then they're slippery and they pop out of your hand and you're swearing. And <laughs> but you can can these whole if you want to. These are a little big for that, some of them. Um, I like to slice them. You can dice them, whatever you want to do. So I just like to slice mine like that. And just remember when you boil them, I didn't boil them to cook them. I just boiled them to help get that skin off easier.
I ended up with eight pint jars, so now I have to put my lids into some water to get those boiling and heated up so they'll seal good. I didn't know how many it was going to fill, so I didn't do it until now. There I have my lids. Uh, once again, there's no reason to boil your bands if you're going to be doing it in a pressure canner. If you're going to be doing it in the water bath, yes, but not in the pressure can. I just uh, heat up the lids. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of salt to each one of these jars. It has to be non-iodized salt. I have no idea why. I'm just putting canning and pickling salt in here. If you're doing this and you don't have any non-iodized salt, uh, don't put any salt in there. It doesn't do anything for the preservation of anything. It's just for taste. Well, the next thing you want to do is add boiling water, and we want to leave about one inch of headspace in this jar. Now the next thing we got to do is try to get rid of any air bubbles. After you pull out the air bubbles, if you need to add a little bit more water into them, sometimes you have a lot of air bubbles and that'll drop. I see I got one right back there that needs just a little bit more water. Next thing up is make sure you wipe your rims. Now that that's done, we'll put on our lids, get them down so they're just tight and finger tight, just like that. Now that they're all in the canner, now we have to wait for that to come up to a boil again, and then we're going to let it sit there and boil for 10-15 minutes. I swear that's the most important part. If you, You're still going to get broken jars, but if you want the least amount of broken jars, make sure that everything gets heated up to boiling for quite a while before you put the top on the canner. Everything in there now has been boiling like this for at least 10 minutes, so now it's time for me to put on the lid. Now I'm just going to let it sit here with the cap on, but uh, not the weight. And then uh, once it starts blowing that steam out, I'm going to let it blow steam for about 10 minutes, and then I'm going to cap it. So now I'm going to cap it. I'm going to bring that up to 10 pounds. I actually like to do it about 11 pounds, kind of play with it right about there. And uh, once it gets up there, these are pints, so I have to do them for 30 minutes. If I was doing quarts, we would do them for 35 minutes. So now it's just a waiting game. Okay, so once it hit 10 pounds, I started the timer for 30 minutes. And then I always turn this down to right there, and it'll just sit there and be just about right where it is right now come back down just a little bit, kind of stay right there at 11. Well, I'm just going to let this sit here and come uh, down on pressure all by itself, and then we'll open it up and see what we ended up with.
Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching this video on how I can my beets. Uh, it's the next morning, of course, and that's when I pulled the lids and stuff off. And now I'm going to go out there. I have more beans to can and carrots to can and lots of stuff to harvest. We'll see you guys on the next video.